the Intergalactic Council, a grand coalition of species from across the cosmos, convened under the starlit dome of their assembly hall on the neutral planet of Xerxes. Delegates from a thousand worlds murmured among themselves, casting curious glances toward the human representatives who had requested this urgent session. The humans, a relatively new addition to the council, were an enigma. Known for their tenacity and unpredictability, they had quickly garnered a reputation as a species not to be underestimated. Today they stood before the council, not to seek aid or broker peace, but to issue a stark warning. Commander Sarah Chen, the lead human delegate, stepped forward. Her voice, amplified by the translator device pinned to her uniform, resonated through the hall. Esteemed members of the Intergalactic Council, she began, her tone firm yet tinged with an undercurrent of urgency. We come before you not as supplicants but as equals, to deliver a message of paramount importance. The hall fell silent, every being present sensing the gravity of the moment. Commander Chen continued, The human race is young compared to many of your civilizations. We are aware of our relative infancy in the grand tapestry of the cosmos. However, let it be known that our youth does not equate to weakness or naivety. She paused, allowing her words to permeate the chamber. Our history, though brief, is replete with trials and tribulations. We have endured conflicts that have tested the very fabric of our society. Through these challenges, we have forged a resilience that is woven into the essence of our being. A holographic display flickered to life behind her, showcasing scenes of Earth's past, wars, natural disasters, and the indomitable human spirit that rose from the ashes time and time again. We do not seek conflict, Chen asserted, but we will not flee from it. Our will to survive and thrive is unbreakable. The display shifted, now illustrating Earth's rapid technological advancements and their expansion into the cosmos. Our message to the galaxy is clear, she declared, her gaze sweeping across the assembled delegates. Do not mistake our diplomacy for weakness. Do not confuse our desire for peace with the absence of might. The human race stands united, ready to protect our sovereignty and our place in the stars. The hall erupted in murmurs and whispers, the impact of her words sending ripples through the gathered species. Commander Chen concluded, We extend the hand of friendship to all who seek it, but let it be known. The spirit of humanity is not one to be trifided with. Consider this not a threat, but a declaration of our resolve. As the human delegation exited the stage, the council was left in a state of reflective silence. The message was clear. Humanity was a force to be acknowledged, a species whose depths of strength and determination were not to be underestimated. Despite the solemn warning issued by the humans, not all members of the Intergalactic Council heeded their words. Among them, the Yurketh Empire, a formidable military power renowned for their conquests, perceived humanity's declaration not as a caution, but as a challenge to their dominion. The Yurketh, with their advanced technology and vast armadas, had long viewed themselves as the unchallenged rulers of their sector. The humans' bold stance stirred a mix of disdain and curiosity within the Yurketh hierarchy. How could such a fledgling race dare to assert themselves in the grand arena of galactic affairs? they pondered. This arrogance, coupled with the desire to test humanity's mettle, led the Yurketh to a fateful decision. Under the cloak of darkness, a vast Yurketh fleet set a course for Earth. Their ships, bristling with weapons capable of reducing planets to rubble, emerged from hyperspace on the fringes of the solar system. Their arrival was not a declaration of war but an outright assault, intending to subjugate humanity and crush their spirit in a single, devastating blow. As the Yurketh armada advanced, Earth's defenses sprang to life. Orbital platforms and interplanetary vessels, remnants of humanity's fledgling space military, mounted a desperate defense. But the disparity in power was evident. The Yurketh's initial salvo turned cities into ash and oceans into steam. Panic and chaos spread across the globe as humanity faced an existential threat from the stars. But the human spirit, as declared in the Council, was not so easily broken. Amidst the devastation, a spark of resistance flickered to life. Underground bunkers and hidden bases prepared for such a dire scenario became hubs of human defiance. The world's militaries, disparate and diverse, united under a common cause, survival against an alien aggressor. This unity ignited a fire within the human population. Civilians, soldiers, scientists, and leaders rallied, 
pooling their resources, intellect, and willpower to counter the invasion. The planet, scarred by the Urkith's onslaught, became a beacon of resistance. Every city, every street, and every home turned into a bastion of human tenacity. As the Yurkith continued their advance, expecting swift capitulation, they encountered a reality far from their calculations. Guerrilla attacks hampered their land forces, cyber strikes disrupted their communications, and every attempt to establish a foothold was met with fierce opposition. Humanity, in its darkest hour, shone brightest, embodying the very warning they had issued. They were a species that thrived amidst adversity, unyielding even in the face of overwhelming odds. In the aftermath of the Yurkith's initial assault, Earth lay wounded but defiant. The once bustling cities now bore the scars of the attack, serving as stark reminders of the alien threat. But amidst the ruins, the indomitable spirit of humanity burned brighter than ever. From the ashes rose a global resistance, a testament to human resilience and ingenuity. The underground networks, long prepared for such a scenario, became the lifeblood of the human resistance. Bunkers and secret bases buzzed with activity, as strategists, scientists, and soldiers worked tirelessly to orchestrate a counteroffensive. Every facet of human knowledge and technology was leveraged in this fight for survival. In the forests, mountains, and ravaged urban landscapes, human guerrilla fighters took to the shadows. Armed with advanced weaponry and fueled by a fierce determination to protect their home, they launched hit and run attacks against the Yurkith forces. Each strike, though small in scale, was a needle prick against the behemoth of the Yurkith military might, slowly bleeding it of its strength. Cyber warfare specialists, the unsung heroes of the resistance, waged a digital war against the Yurkith. Penetrating the alien network, they sowed chaos within the enemy ranks, disrupting communications and sabotaging systems. This digital onslaught served as a force multiplier, amplifying the effectiveness of physical attacks and creating openings for the resistance to exploit. The human resistance was not just a military effort, it was a testament to the collective spirit of humanity. Civilians, displaced by the war, contributed in any way they could. Factories that once produced consumer goods were repurposed to manufacture weapons and supplies. Scientists and engineers developed new technologies and strategies to counter the alien threat. Even children contributed, spreading messages of hope and unity, bolstering the morale of the resistance. Amidst this turmoil, a group of resistance fighters, known as the Vanguard, emerged as the spearhead of the human counteroffensive. Led by Captain Marcus Flynn, a veteran of Earth's space forces, the Vanguard undertook the most dangerous and critical missions against the Yurkith. Their exploits became legendary, inspiring countless others to join the fight. The Yurkith, who had expected a quick and decisive victory, found themselves mired in a relentless and unforgiving conflict. Every victory was met with a counterstrike every advance countered by a cunning trap. The earth, which they had thought to conquer with ease, had become a quagmire that drained their resources and morale. As the resistance grew in strength and sophistication, a glimmer of hope emerged for humanity. The once disparate nations and peoples of earth were now united as never before, bound by a common cause. In the face of annihilation, they found strength in unity, forging a new identity as defenders of their planet. The human resistance, a mosaic of courage, innovation, and determination, stood as a beacon of defiance against the Yurkith. It was a clear message to the invaders and the galaxy at large. Humans would not go quietly into the night. They would fight for their home, for their survival, and for their place among the stars. And in this fierce resolve, the real reason nobody wanted to fight humans was crystallized, their unbreakable spirit in the face of overwhelming odds. The relentless human resistance began to take its toll on the Yurkith Empire's forces. The invaders, who had anticipated an easy conquest, found themselves entangled in a protracted and grueling conflict on Earth. Human ingenuity and resilience, coupled with guerrilla tactics and cyber warfare, shifted the balance of power, slowly turning the tide in humanity's favor. In a daring move, the resistance launched a series of coordinated strikes against the Yurkith's key supply lines and command centers. These operations, executed with precision and stealth, disrupted the invaders' logistics and communication, sowing confusion and disorder among their ranks. The human forces, now more experienced and emboldened, began to reclaim territories, pushing the Yurkith back inch by inch. The Yurkith, facing mounting pressure and unexpected losses, 
were forced to reassess their strategy. Their high command, once confident of their superiority, now grappled with the resilience and tactical ingenuity of the humans. The realization that Earth would not be subdued through sheer force alone led to a palpable shift in the invaders' morale. Amidst this backdrop, a pivotal event unfolded that would further alter the course of the conflict. A team of human scientists working in secrecy achieved a breakthrough in anti yurkith weaponry. This new technology, capable of penetrating the Yurkith's advanced shielding, was swiftly integrated into the human arsenal, leveling the playing field and providing a significant boost to the resistance's capabilities. The introduction of this technology marked a turning point in the war. Human forces now armed with weapons that could effectively counter the Yurkith's technological advantage launched a major offensive. This operation, targeting a critical Yurkith stronghold, was not just a military maneuver, but a statement of human defiance and determination. The battle for the stronghold was intense and brutal. Human soldiers, alongside mechanized units and aerial support, fought with a ferocity that startled the Yurkith defenders. The stronghold, once deemed impregnable, fell to the humans, delivering a significant blow to the Yurkith's operational capacity on Earth. This victory reverberated across the planet and beyond, signaling a new phase in the war. The fall of the stronghold was not just a tactical win, but a symbol of human tenacity. It galvanized the resistance, boosting morale and inspiring even greater efforts to repel the invaders. As news of the victory spread, the global perception of the conflict shifted. What had once seemed like a desperate struggle for survival now appeared to be a winnable war. The resistance's success demonstrated that the Yurkith, for all their technological prowess, were not invincible. The Yurkith, now on the defensive, faced a resurgent human force that was no longer just fighting for survival, but for victory. The tide had indeed turned, with humanity seizing the momentum, driven by a newfound sense of hope and the unyielding resolve to reclaim their world. The war was far from over, but at this pivotal moment, the message was clear humanity would not be defeated. They would fight until the last invader was expelled from their planet, reaffirming their place in the cosmos not as victims, but as valiant defenders of their home. The tide of the war on Earth had turned, and with it, the perceptions of the galaxy's many inhabitants. The human resistance's successes against the Yurkith were not just local news. They reverberated across star systems, challenging long-held beliefs about the pecking order in the cosmos. In the grand halls of the Intergalactic Council, the human delegation, once seen as representatives of a young and potentially naive species, were now regarded with newfound respect. The Council, which had previously observed Earth's plight with a detached concern, began to view the humans as key players in the galactic community. This shift in perception was not lost on other species, some of whom had suffered under the Yurkith's expansionist policies. Seeing humans stand up to a common adversary, ignited a spark of hope and a reevaluation of potential alliances. Diplomatic channels buzzed with activity as various civilizations reached out to offer support or initiate dialogues with Earth. Amidst this changing interstellar landscape, the human leadership seized the opportunity to strengthen their position. They forged alliances with species that shared their values or had mutual grievances against the Yurkith. These alliances brought not just moral support, but practical aid technology exchanges, strategic information, and commitments to mutual defense. The Yurkith Empire, sensing the shift in galactic sentiment, found themselves increasingly isolated. The narrative of their invincibility was shattered, not only on the battlefields of Earth, but in the court of galactic opinion. Their aggressive posture, once intimidating, now sparked a coalition of forces united by a common desire to curb their expansion and aggression. Back on Earth, the influx of alien technologies and strategies bolstered the human resistance, leading to a series of victories that further demoralized the Yurkith forces. The invaders who had once marched through the streets of human cities with impunity were now hunted in those same streets, facing an enemy emboldened by support from across the stars. The Galactic Council, recognizing the changing tide, took a historic step. They voted to lift certain restrictions on arms and technology transfers, enabling a more robust support system for Earth. This decision, once unthinkable, was a testament to the human's impact on the galaxy's political landscape. The human spirit, which had been the cornerstone of their resistance, 
became a beacon for others across the galaxy. Stories of human bravery, ingenuity, and perseverance were told on countless worlds, inspiring others to stand up against oppression, whether from the Yurketh or other dominions. As the Yurketh reeled from these developments, their leadership faced a stark choice. Continue a war that was increasingly becoming untenable or reconsider their stance and seek a resolution. The humans, once underestimated and expected to capitulate, had not only defended their home, but had also altered the very dynamics of interstellar politics. The galactic shift, as it would come to be known, was not just about a change in alliances or the rise of a new power. It was about the recognition of humanity's resilience and the universal desire for freedom and self-determination, echoing across the cosmos and changing the course of galactic history. As the galactic shift redefined alliances and stances across the cosmos, the Yurketh Empire found itself cornered, both on Earth and in the broader galactic community. The once mighty empire faced dwindling options as its forces on Earth were pushed back by an emboldened human resistance, now bolstered by interstellar support and advanced technology. Realizing the futility of their prolonged campaign and the potential for a disastrous defeat, the Yurketh High Command decided on a desperate final strategy a decisive strike aimed at the heart of human resistance, hoping to cripple the humans' will to fight and force a surrender before the Yurketh's weakening position in the galaxy became irreversible. The target was Earth's Resistance Command Center, located deep underground, the nerve center coordinating the global counteroffensive against the Yurketh. If the Yurketh could obliterate this hub, they believed they could fracture the human resistance and turn the tide once more in their favor. As the Yurketh fleet amassed in orbit, Preparing for their all-in assault, human intelligence networks, now enhanced with alien tech and insights, caught wind of the impending attack. The resistance, understanding the stakes, mobilized every asset at its disposal. The stage was set for a confrontation that would either solidify humanity's hard-fought gains or unravel their achievements in one fell swoop. The Yurketh descended with fury, unleashing a barrage intended to penetrate deep into Earth's crust, targeting the command center. But humanity was ready. Surface defense batteries powered by hybrid technology lit up the sky, turning night into day as they engaged the Yurketh onslaught. On the ground, human and allied alien forces stood shoulder to shoulder, defending the entry points to the underground command center. The Yurketh, undeterred by the resistance, deployed ground troops, leading to intense skirmishes across strategic locations. The battles were fierce, as every human and ally knew the critical nature of this stand. In space, the human fleet, alongside vessels from their new alien allies, engaged the Yurketh. Spacecraft darted across the void, unleashing volleys of plasma and kinetic weapons in a chaotic ballet of warfare. The Yurketh, surprised by the strength and coordination of the joint forces, found their advance stymied. Beneath the surface in the command center, leaders and strategists coordinated the defense, their resolve unshaken despite the peril above. They issued orders, redirected forces, and unleashed strategic counterstrikes against the Yurketh positions. The battle raged for what seemed like an eternity, but the resolve of the human-alien alliance began to overshadow the Yurketh's desperation. Slowly but steadily the tide turned. The Yurketh's ground forces were repelled, their fleet battered and forced into a retreat. As the dust settled, it became clear that the Yurketh's last stand had failed. Their attempt to break the human spirit had instead cemented humanity's resolve and their place in the galaxy. The Yurketh, now in disarray, had no choice but to withdraw their remaining forces from Earth, signaling the end of their invasion and the beginning of a new era for humanity.